Hello and welcome back. I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play Europa Universalis 4. This is uh, the Polish Peacekeepers campaign. I am ready to play. I'm good to go. Let's go. Let's do this. All right. By the way, uh, we should probably start the process of annexing Mazovia because we want to get that done sometime soon. Um, so yeah, I streamed a really strange title. I, I, I played Stardew Valley yesterday for a lot of time and it was good. It was good. It helped me get back into the swing of like talking to myself all day in front of a camera and uh, microphone and stuff and yeah so feeling good we have longtime rivals eclipse the Teutons honored calls against Denmark were the fourth ranked great power thought we were the third before uh, looks like we've fallen pretty far behind actually in development 334 so what can we do to get above 50 again we've already insulted somebody we're already embargoing all three people we have no ships so we can't do anything it used to be that you could support someone's uh, like, subsidize an enemy's rival. Can we still do that? I think so. I have absolutely no cash, but it's a thing we can do. So, we pick a rival, and then we pick one of their enemies. So the Ottomans are enemies with Austria, Mamluks, and the Timurids. Uh, let's see, Hungary is enemies with Bohemia. Kimia and the Ottomans, that's not, that's no good. And Denmark is enemies with Hungary. Huh, so I would guess then that Bohemia is, is probably the, the one that makes the most sense. Although, Bohemia is defending the Teutons, which is rather unfortunate. But that's two people who have Bohemia. Two people or one? Am I getting myself confused here? Yeah, it's just one. I guess actually Austria would make more sense. Because I don't want to support Bohemia, not if he's going to potentially end up at war with me. Alright, let's let's uh, let's do that. We'll come back from improving relations with uh, a guy. And we will give subsidies till the end of time in the amount of like a half ducat. And that should start giving us some bonuses um, over time, I think. Unless they've changed it. Bum, bum, bum. It might be that we actually have to have positive uh, numbers. Muscovy has announced me as a rival. Cool, that's that's fun. Uh, no. All right, <clears throat> so we're trying to get our army home. We gotta get through the Great Horde. I kind of wish that diplomats worked like in Victoria 2, where instead of having like an actual person, you like accrued diplomatic interaction things. So I didn't feel like having a diplomat sitting around was like the end of the world. Because that's how it feels usually. I feel like it's a waste, horrible, horrible waste to let them sit around. Okay, cancel military access through there. <clears throat> We have a little bit of cash, but not enough to really go crazy and hire every advisor and stuff. And I don't actually know if this supporting enemies thing is going to work out. It might be that because Austria is a great power on their own, that it doesn't count. But, I don't know. I don't remember how it works. It's been a long time since I've used it. Steel has finally declared their war upon Granada. And it looks like Morocco is going to defend him. Is that his only ally? Yep. Okay. So we're obviously going to get involved with a war sooner or later. <clears throat> Quite a few people who have no air. Portugal at age 15, though. I'm assuming that nothing's changed since the last time I recorded. Everyone's willing to defend each other and stuff. It's like Lithuania is not going too crazy on their provinces that they're interested in. Moldavia did fabricate on Wallachia, but the Ottomans, I'm assuming, will defend them quite happily. He's still in his war against Trebizond, and he's still sieging that thing down. He's been doing it for 520 days, and he's at 12 siege status. The Trebizond has currently uh, got a grim outlook, I would say.
Okay, I was thinking to probably improve relations with the Pope man again while we wait on something changing. I don't know. The, Mo the Moldavian separatists are going to tick down while we have our condottieri defend this. I'm going to probably get the alert saying condottieri clients are disappointed soon, which is fine because I'm hoping he ends his war. I'm, I'm thinking that this subsidization thing is just not working out. I don't really know why, but it, it feels like that's the case. I forget. I forget how that works. Remind me if you know. I swear it used to be a thing. Yep, Pinotary clients are disappointed. I'd rather just save that money and, and do something else with it then, if I can't do that. I mean, alternatively, we could just declare war on one of our rivals. Like, we just attack Hungary. The Livonians would not defend them. Interesting. We have no CB and we still have a truce. He has still not succeeded in his siege. He's actually been far smarter with the siege than I would have ever expected him to be. He's not gained much manpower, but he's he's trying. Go for some disease outbreaks. <laughs> nope. He just won his war. Well, kind of. He's still got to go siege down Theodoro. Very likely. He won't be able to peace out until then. Alright, four months until that thing goes away. Uh, I really hate missing out on Monarch points just because of one power projection. But there's not too much that I can really do here. Um... Wow, that was weird. I actually gained money last month because... Hey, we're getting our actual stipend for the Condottieri now. Okay, uh, in that case, let's uh, let's hire the level 1 trade advisor and the level 1 mm, administrative advisor. Maybe the level 2 half-priced advisor. Actually, no, let's go with the, the missionary strength guy and see if we can get anything converted right now. 55 months. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll give that a try. My mission right now. Conquer Kelm now. Oh, he actually did take the piece. He didn't siege down Trebizond. Well, there's a chance that the Ottomans. Yep, he's going to demerk. He got some manpower back, but. People stay has declared war upon Provence. Nobles demand recompensation. Well, there goes all my cash. I don't want to lose the stability. Guess I shouldn't have hired those advisors. <laughs> Alright, let's leave this up here for at least a month or two just to, to try to avoid having to take another loan. We should still be netting a little bit of cash. I don't think it's going to succeed, but... No, it's not. It's just... Whatever, we'll end up taking the loan. Okay, Kazan, when can we revoke these condottieri? We can revoke them now. So, the fact that I marched over there and suffered some attrition bought me a little bit of time, apparently. Let's not risk them preventing me from renting them out to anybody else. I should have rented a much smaller army to them. That way we could have actually actively helped them in that war. It does seem kind of silly how easy it is to just suffer ridiculous amounts of attrition. Area-based attrition, man. That's the way to go. Alright, so we can take military tech early. 6% penalty. Uh, that would give us no tech advantage over the Ottomans. No tech ad Well, yes, tech advantage over Hungary. Tech advantage over most of our neighbors. But I don't really want to fight. Muscovy, Bohemia, Denmark. When is my truce up? Truce is up in April of 57. So in about a year, we could attack our rival directly. Or if somebody feels like fabricating a claim, 
like, I don't know, say, over here? Somewhere over here. <laughs> Lithuania. Come on, buddy, get, get, get going. There's a comment in the last video suggesting that I go for religious ideas, so we always have a CB. Kind of defeats the purpose slightly of the whole, like, Polish peacekeeper theme, but, you know, religious atrocities and genocide. <laughs> that's fine. I guess we could take a look at institution spread now. Yeah, that's doing. So in our capital, we're at 0.26 per month, not very fast. Bessarabia, not spreading very fast. Austria is looking like they are going to get it pretty soon. Uh, as soon as they get it... Oh, there we go, yeah. Well, that's Istria, that's part of Venice. Yeah, I'm guessing that Austria will get it first. Byzantium still exists. I mean, that's like one of the good things that's still happening in this campaign, is that I'm not letting them take that. Flanders has it. How did Flanders get it so quickly? And I haven't done a good job of, like, trying to get this large city. But I think we get that when we finish the integration of this guy, removing our capital. Still, for a few months I could just develop this up to a larger number and then get those extra splendor points. In other news, I got to decide, uh, or submit my, my country requests for like which country I could play as at the event coming up in Poland and uh, I'm not gonna say what I what I like asked for because I have no idea what I'm actually gonna get there's a lot of players and we had to submit like 12 different things that we would be interested in playing and we'll see we'll see what we end up getting but I'm excited to see pick some pick some good options I think Alright, dominance of the clergy is going down. The Slakta are very nearly going to be back to loyal soon. We could give them a little bit more land, actually, and get them back to loyal soon. The burghers are currently at a number where I could probably revoke a province from them. Get my numbers lower. They don't really need this province with grain. We'll be upset for a few months, but then we end up... Yeah, I think that that's going to be good. And the clergy do expect to have... ...15%. Mm. I want more Cossack territory, more step, so that I can actually take advantage of these guys. Okay, slowly losing some cash, but I think keeping the forts activated and just kind of being in a holding pattern here for a few years while I integrate my nation, my subject nation, and just kind of recover some manpower. I'm paying a lot of money right now in state maintenance to, to try to up my manpower in preparation for some war or another. And Byzantium's still alive, that, that's what's important. we still got them guaranteed, spending a relationship slot on that. Um, improving relations with the Pope again. My papal influence. Hey, we actually have a Curia Cardinal now. I don't have my pop ups turned on for that, so I completely missed it. Where's my flag? That's not my flag. There we are. We have one Cardinal. So, because of that, we can actually invest and go for it. Uh, how old is Mr. Pope Man right now? The current Pope is 55. I'm thinking probably I want to just save up for Blessed Ruler or Papal Legate or something else. Although becoming the Curia Controller so we could declare a Holy War on the Ottomans would be pretty good. Ecklenburg's got a lot of support. Yeah, there's the truce with Sweden, Denmark, Norway. And I'm assuming the Livonian order as well. Uh, oh, actually, no, that's an extra five years. Okay, so what if we just attacked Denmark directly and then use that as an excuse to attack to take Kelno for the mission? 
What would that look like? Because, yeah, Sweden is in this thing and, and whatever, and Norway is going to be very, very loyal. There always are. They've got, like, a historic relationship modifier or something that gives them, like, minus 25% liberty desire, I think it is. Something crazy. Hold on. He's my rival, is he not? No, he's not. Yes, he is. Okay, we just need to wait a month. I was going to say, where's my humiliate rival? Alright, so if we declared war this way, um, obviously... Ah, shoot, the following peace options are disabled. That's right, we wouldn't be able to separate piece the other guy for land because we'd be using humiliate. Derp, derp, derp. Otherwise, I'm looking at some really nasty directional... Well, still, declaring war on Denmark could be fun. Zam would like to rehire my troops again. He is winning his war. There's no active siege on, on his capital fort, though. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean... We might as well. <laughs> we, we might as well. He will not pay because no, no land access to the capital. Of course, I hate that. I really do. Nah, let's just keep the troops. Let's just keep handy. Hungary with no air. Yep, I probably should not have the, uh... The three advisors right now. And actually, probably a good idea to maybe go down to a level one military advisor. Because we're not going to need this many military points. I'm not doing a military idea group first. I really like that morale of armies though. And he's a half price level two military, which is rare. Mazovi is having some issues, but if we get him integrated, that'll go away. March of 59. Less than a year and a half away. Get this subject integrated. Looks like the burgers should be loyal again here in a month or two. And, uh... Peace support for Jan. Jan Jagellion, the 203. Not really interested in that, I think. Mecklenburg getting that random event that gave him an extra plus 10 made it Pretty hard for anyone else to compete. I'd like that 4-3-3. Lundberg's error is not bad. On Monarch Death, we get another guy. I don't think it matters if I stop being a Jigalian, right? We're not gonna like lose the Union over anybody. I don't think it matters. I kind of don't like having my relationship tied up, though, with Byzantium. Maybe I should just do a straight-up alliance with them. At least then we'd be accruing some favors and we could call them to arms directly to, against the Ottomans if they're not going to declare their own war. It's not a bad idea. They're neutral. Polish naval strength. Really? You care about my naval strength? Okay. I, mean, I do have coastline. I guess I could try to build boats. We have five sailors. That's pretty good. <laughs> Five, five whole men in the entire country who know how to man a boat. Muscovy's declared war upon Novgorod. Well, that is not allowed. Novgorod is allied to nobody. Military attack four versus military attack four. Muscovy is almost definitely going to win that. I have to imagine that Muscovy has a pretty ridiculous number of troops. Even though they, they don't have any of the... He has mercs right now. What? 17k troops against Novgorod's how many? Novgorod only has 9k. And he's got mercs too. What is up with this AI hiring mercs? Well, we got grasslands in the capital still. We could get our army up there. We could just go and assist. I think that that's going to be the way to go. We're going to have to get involved in this war. Put, put the piece back into the pieces. 
peacekeepers or something. We could also take military tech right now and have a military tech advantage over them. Did we seriously just suffer? God damn it. You see, it said it was green. It was green a second ago. Why is it not green now? The winter? Probably the winter. Damn it. Area-based supply. It needs to be area-based. Yeah, I like the idea of taking Military Tech 5 and getting involved in this war. But, fortunately, Lithuania has stabilized. He's got no unrest. I mean, he's very unlikely to, to stay at no unrest. No guy just lost their war to Kazan. We're at 73% integration of Mazovia, and... I'm assuming that sometime in the near future, Moldavia will stop being disloyal. He's only disloyal right now because of the foreign support, which never really should have happened in the first place. But it did... Great Horde wants troops. Who's he at war with? Attacker against Kazan. And the Uzbeki. So Uzbek declared on Kazan. Interesting. Alright. Well, I'm going to take a break here. Next episode, we're going to decide if we want to go and do some sieging in the Russian winter. Or if we want to just let Nos Novgorod die this time. I don't think that I do. I think that we want to keep no Muscovy in check. Weak enough that maybe Kazan or Great Horde can take some bites out of him. If I don't let him... If, if, if I don't stop him, then he's just going to become this huge thorn on my side later. Uh, this huge Russian thorn, in fact. So, that's no good. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next episode. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in a bit.